A few months ago, we made a video over 8 great JRPGs for the Nintendo Switch that you need to play. We didn't really think much upon releasing it, but little did we know, it would go on to be our most watched video so far, raking in a little over 40,000 views at the time of me saying this. Now, at present point in time, we are a really small channel, only getting hundreds of views on average, with a thousand being pretty rare, so this was a pretty significant jump to say the least. With that said, since that video did so well, we thought it would be a good idea to do a follow up to it, but this time featuring only ports and remasters. In the first video, we just covered original games for the Switch, or definitive editions with tons of new content that were previously never released before in the West. This list is only going to include old games that have been ported over to the Switch with nothing new added, other than a minor touch up on graphics, and maybe a few other small changes that don't affect the game in any significant way. If you haven't seen our original video yet, we do recommend doing so as there are some real solid titles that shouldn't be missed. Now with that out of the way, let's waste no more of your time and just dive into this list over 8 great JRPGs for the Nintendo Switch Port Slash Remaster Edition. First up on our list, we have Grandia HD Collection. This collection includes the first two Grandia games from this amazing yet sadly forgotten series which are conveniently the two best games as well. In my opinion, the first Grandia game is one of the very best on the original PlayStation, which we pointed out in our top 10 PlayStation RPGs video. And the second game is also one of the best JRPGs on the PS2 and side for the best on the Dreamcast. Both the PS1 and the PS2 were JRPG heavy consoles, so that statement doesn't come lightly. They both feature a charming and vibrant world, great character development amongst their unique cast, and an incredibly fun, turn-based, semi-real-time battle system. Like, no joke, the battle system in these games are some of my favorite combat in any JRPG ever, if not my all-time favorite, honestly. There's a lot of strategy involving canceling enemies' attacks and choosing the appropriate skill or action based on the enemy's positioning or current preparation of action. The first Grandia game is a light-hearted coming-of-age tale about the wonder of adventuring the world. It does get a lot more serious and emotional later on, but for the most part, it's definitely more of a lighter game, tonally speaking. The second game is more of a typical God vs. Devil type plot and quite a bit darker in comparison at times, while still having a charming atmosphere overall. I do like the plot and settings of both games, but I do prefer the narrative of the first one as the second one is kind of a little more cliche in nature. Grandia 2 does have slightly improved combat though with a much better skill and magic upgrade system. And the main character, Ryudo, is one of the coolest JRPG protagonists ever, both in design and personality, whereas Justin from the first game's got some spunk to him. Design wise, he's one of the lamest in my opinion. All these factors make it a toss up in which one I prefer, but luckily for you, you don't have to decide since the collection includes both of them. And with Valentine's Day coming up, I'm not gonna lie, they do have some of the cuter love stories I've seen in a JRPG, so if you're in the mood for that sort of thing right now, then this is a good time to check them out. Next on our list, we have Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles is basically just a direct port of the original PS3 game, aside from slightly sharper graphics and the DLC already being added. The combat in this game is a hybrid of a strategy tactical system and a third person shooter. Yes, you did hear that correctly, it's definitely one of the most unique RPG battle systems I've ever played. Not only that, but it's one of the most fun ones as well. There are different types of units you can deploy and manage in battle, all with their own sets of strengths and weaknesses, requiring a lot of strategy in order to pick out the right units in preparation for the enemies you're about to face, and positioning them accordingly. While the combat is definitely the most unique thing about this game, that's not to say it's the only notable aspect, however. The emotional, war-driven story is really strong and engaging to follow along. The characters also have some nice depth to them and fleshed out backstories. It's really just a fantastic game overall that I highly recommend. And while we're already on topic about the series, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Valkyria Chronicles 4 as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get around to including this one in our first Switch video, but it easily could have been there and is a great addition to the series that deserves some love. Next up, we have Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE Encore. 
Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a crossover between the Persona series and the Fire Emblem series that takes place in modern day Tokyo with the big focus on Japanese idols. The whole J-pop gimmick may turn some people off initially, but even if you're not normally a fan of that sort of thing, if you can look past it, there's a relaxing and fun experience to be had here. Aesthetically, the game definitely resembles Persona more as you travel through modern day Japan while meeting up with friends and stuff like that. The characters are from Fire Emblem though, however, you don't need to know anything about them to understand the story. The combat in Tokyo Mirage is a lot of fun and combines elements from both Persona and Fire Emblem as you utilize element weaknesses and the weapon triangle system to create long combos. The original game initially came out for the Wii U, but this enhanced port, titled Encore, has a few small cosmetic changes, some new costumes, and a new story segment but honestly, it doesn't really add that much. Now, would I say this game is on the same level as Persona 4 and 5 or Fire Emblem Three Houses? Honestly, no, but it's still a fun, lighthearted experience that can be beaten relatively quickly for JRPG standards. If you're a fan of either the Persona or Fire Emblem series, or just like this type of setting, then check it out. Coming up next, we have Star Ocean First Departure R. First Departure R is a remaster of the original First Departure that came out on the PSP, which itself is a complete reimagining of the first Star Ocean game, which was previously only released in Japan for the Super Famicom. This remastered version includes sharpened up graphics, new character portraits and voiceovers, which can be switched with the original at any time, and a handful of small other things. Overall, Star Ocean First Departure is a really fun traditional JRPG experience that takes place in a cool sci-fi fantasy setting. The most unique things about this game I would say are the multiple optional characters you can only get on specific playthroughs, giving the game a lot of replayability, and the really engaging action-based battle system. This is a fairly short game as well that we even included in our video over 8 great JRPGs you can beat in under 20 hours. Its shorter length goes really well with the multiple playthroughs that this game encourages. If all of this sounds up your alley, then give it a shot. It's a great game. Next up, we have Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. Nino Kuni originally released for the PS3 and is a stunningly gorgeous collaboration between Level 5 and Studio Ghibli. The overworld map and really just the overall aesthetic of the game are easily some of my favorite of any JRPG ever. As most who watch the channel probably already know, I'm a huge fan of bright, vibrant visuals and unique art styles, and Nino Kuni definitely has those both in spades. It's basically like playing a Studio Ghibli movie in game form, only a really long one, which needless to say, is pretty damn cool. Don't let the younger characters fool you either. Nino Kuni tells a really emotional tale that is sure to pull at your heartstrings a time or two along the way. It might just be my favorite story of any JRPG from that console generation in which this one was originally released, actually. Combine this with some super addicting Pokemon-like catching and evolution elements, and you have a fantastic game that is easily one of the best RPGs on the Switch, regardless of it being a port, and one of my most recommended games on this list as well. If you still haven't played Ni no Kuni yet, what are you waiting for? There's no better time than the present. Next on our list, we have Digimon Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition. This Complete Edition includes the original Cyber Sleuth and its sequel slash side story, Hacker's Memory, which initially came out for the PS4. Considering this bundle features both games, it makes the Switch version the most efficient one to get as the PS4 versions came out separately. Digimon Cyber Sleuth is another game that takes some pretty heavy inspiration from the Persona series and throws it in with the Digimon universe to create a really compelling and fun experience. I didn't even watch Digimon growing up and was a Pokemon dude through and through, but even still, I was surprised at how much of a blast I had with this game while not even knowing who half the Digimon even were. In a way, it maybe made it a little more fun actually, as it was a mystery with not knowing what Digimon they were going to evolve into. Or should I say Digivolve? or whatever the hell term it is. Those factors, plus a fun turn-based system utilizing enemy weaknesses and the engaging, captivating setting of modern Tokyo to explore, make for a really fun experience, even if you're not too familiar with the Digimon series like I wasn't. Honestly, it just made me a little more interested to check out some more games from the series in the future. 
I've heard some people say before that Digimon seemed to grow up with its fans, whereas Pokemon did not, and given how the most recent entries in the series have been, I can see where they're coming from and agree with that actually. Both Digimon Cyber Sleuth and Hacker's Memory are well worth playing, with the latter actually not really being a true sequel, but more of a side story that takes place at the same time in the same place, just focusing on a different set of characters to give a new perspective on things. With that said, you should play it after beating the original to get the best overall experience. Coming up next, we have Moon Remix RPG Adventure. Moon is easily the most unique RPG on this entire list, as it's not really an RPG actually, but more of an anti-RPG that deconstructs the genre. To be technical, it plays out more like an adventure point-and-click game, so I'm kind of bending the rules a little bit to include it here, but considering it was made for people who have played a lot of RPGs before, aka most of you guys and girls, I thought it was still relevant enough to talk about. Moon places you in control of a young boy who gets transported into the RPG he's playing, where he then sees the same game play out from a very different perspective. You see the main hero of the game, which is not you, mercilessly slaughter innocent monsters and break into people's houses, stealing all their belongings and stuff like that. Yes, these are things you do in pretty much every JRPG ever, but Moon makes you feel like shit about them and pokes fun at how ridiculous some of the tropes in the genre really are. Instead of killing monsters in Moon, you try to save the souls of monsters that the hero himself killed and basically just try to spread love across the world. Love is definitely the main theme of this game and given how much tension we've had in the world over the last year or so, it makes this the perfect time to play this as we all could use a little more love and positivity in our lives I think. As if the game wasn't unique enough, there's also a day and night mechanic and a time system that plays a lot into the gameplay. NPCs all have different schedules requiring specific times of the day or week in order to complete tasks associated with them. For a game that initially came out for the original PlayStation in the late 90s, it was really ambitious and ahead of its time in a lot of aspects. It went on to heavily inspire some more recent games that achieved far more popularity than Moon ever did like Undertale for example. I will say though, it would have been nice if they would have added some quality of life features to this port instead of just directly porting it. But as someone who remembers seeing screenshots of this game on game FAQs back in the 90s and viewing it as one of those rare holy grail games that we just never got unfortunately, I'm just happy to finally receive it at all. Now, if only some other developers could take note and port over some other classic RPGs that we never got in the West back in the day. I'll be waiting. Alright, the last game we have on our list, or should I say games in this case, are the Final Fantasy ports with Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, and 10. 12 isn't included here as it was in our original Switch video, being a definitive edition with a lot of bonus content. Look, I won't go into too much details on these games as if you're a fan of RPGs, you've probably already heard of these games before and know the general gist about them. In case you don't though, here's a brief rundown. They all feature really fun turn-based combat, huge engaging worlds to explore, memorable cast of characters, emotionally captivating plots, and absolutely amazing music. The settings of the games vary quite a bit as 7 and 8 are more semi-futuristic steampunk fantasy, whereas 9 is more of a straight medieval fantasy, and Sin has a unique tropical vibe with some Asian influence that's really cool. I wish we got more settings like that in games honestly. They're all really incredible games and some of the best RPGs ever, but if I had to give my recommendation, I would probably either start with 7, 9, or 10. While 8 is one of the most fun ones to replay for the junction system, it's also the black sheep to an extent due to some gameplay mechanics and a weaker cast of characters, arguably. Still, you can't go wrong with any one of them. While I do love all of them, if you had to put me on the spot, 9 and 10 are probably my personal favorites, not just from this bunch, but in the whole series. If for whatever reason you haven't played the Squaresoft classics from the PS1 and PS2 yet, stop watching this video and pick up a controller. Okay with that said, that about wraps up this video over 8 great JRPGs for the Nintendo Switch port slash remaster edition. The Switch seems to be the metropolis of JRPGs these days, so I'm sure there are some ports that we didn't cover here. If we missed some of your favorites, let us know with the comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot if you could either like it or subscribe if you haven't already to help us with the algorithm so we can keep putting out videos consistently. 
If you want to take your support a step further, we have links to our Patreon in our bio below for those kind enough to donate and help the channel. Patreon supporters will also be included in our credits at the end of our video, once we actually get one, that is. Regardless, none of that is necessary as we're happy just to have you here watching. Other than that, have an awesome day everyone. Thank you.